several other organizations. Um, we have chosen the subject of um, heat stress action plan for vulnerable communities. Uh, and Irade has been active in this uh, field. Uh, as you can see, we just completed 20 years. Uh, and uh, one of the first uh, uh, projects we did was on gender and climate change. Uh, it was uh, UNDP asking us to uh, organize a session at COP8 uh, in New Delhi. Uh, 2002. So you can uh, imagine we have been uh, seeing this uh, climate resilience work uh, that is mainly developing vulnerability index, roadmaps, uh, policies, and assessments. Whereas disaster resilience is a particular type of uh, uh, resilience, which is where we work on uh, cities and states and uh, how uh, we can use various techniques such as GIS and remote sensing. Uh, disaster management strategies and again action plans. In heat health resilience, perhaps some of you may have been getting our newsletters. Uh, we have climate adaptive heat stress action plans, early warning systems in dengue management, air pollution action plan, etc. And infrastructure is one of the key uh, 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 aspect where solar city action plans, waste management, Critical infrastructure mapping. So this is a highly active uh, uh, area for us, uh, led by Rohit Magotra, who is the organizer of this session. <coughs> um, I have been part of uh, IPCC and uh, COP and so on. And after Rio, I must say, uh, for about 10, 15 years, uh, people are only speaking on mitigation. And adaptation was perhaps a little bit came in late, partly because um, people didn't, couldn't quite see. And even there were uh, so many uh, people who are doubting whether are we, is there a climate change or not, not in the IPCC or COP, but elsewhere. So answering them uh, that this is real and so on was, it took a many, many, a lot of energy. Um, and mitigation plans, because what to do, how to put our, ourselves into low carbon and, um, and um, you know, climate res resilient plan, uh, roadmap for that. So that was the main issue that time. But uh, this has suddenly picked up uh, after 2007 <clears throat> or so. Uh, and as you know, uh, sub sub the first thing people did was... Uh, Disasters were increasing and much more work was uh, done in that area. After that, uh, heat uh, has begun uh, somehow recently because somehow people thought that one, de one degree, 1.5 degree does don't, doesn't matter, but they, were, they are wrong. <laughs> because as you know, uh, in the Arctic and Antarctic, uh, the uh, temperatures have gone up by 30 degrees. So this is just an average. And uh, uh, we are still at the bottom. I mean, well, you know, you know, if there is a permafrost which can uh, start uh, decomposing, then a lot of CO2 can happen, and you have a runaway uh, greenhouse effect. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, so we have to be very active. And as you can see, <coughs> uh, Obeshwana is always uh, concerned about communities and especially vulnerable communities. And that's the correct approach because we see uh, we have forgotten many of the actually um, sensible and even uh, cheaper options that we were ourselves practicing earlier uh, when we didn't have the air conditioners and, uh, and uh, air coolers and refrigerators, how, how we were storing the, uh, some of you are too young to know, remember even that, but um, you know, we, in the evening we used to spray water and um, we keep things in the cool uh, area, the, the, the uh, pots and so on, keep them in cool areas, put some cloth around it. And many such small, small tricks that is needed for poor. And in South Asia, we have the most vulnerable communities and they, these, these uh, communities actually make up for almost 50% of the, of the uh, population. So um, 
this one, uh, these practices should be very important and we should bring them back in a new format. Uh, there used to be fountains uh, which spray uh, water and so on. Uh, some of these things are there at the time of weddings and so on, but uh, there are, they are different types of uh, things. So there are, there are many uh, simpler solutions that we have forgotten. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, they are in other countries in which you can compile many of these, there are many uh, such uh, things that uh, we should bring out because uh, uh, people eat uh, slightly spoiled food and then that starts another type of, uh, you know, uh, disease and so on. So um, I uh, welcome all the panelists. They are very knowledgeable in their fields and they are with us for uh, many, many occasions. I'm sure we would be introducing them or you might have their CVs. And um, I hope that uh, this will be a very active session with all of you uh, participating at the end. Uh, uh, first listening to those speakers and then participating. Uh, I wish uh, the session a great success. Thank you. Thank you. Many thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, a warm welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Nimisha and a warm welcome on behalf of Virati. And uh, I extend warm welcome to all the esteemed panelists and uh, the participants in this uh, most important session on climate adaptive heat stress action plan for vulnerable communities in South Asia. And uh, this uh, session you can will- Can move the slide if you want, uh, or you want, you want it on? Still sharing? Mm -hmm. Slide is being shared? Okay, fine, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, would, uh, I would request uh, our chair, uh, Professor Ajit Pyati to come in the front uh, to uh, to join uh, come forward and uh, speak uh, take over the session uh, to introduce Professor Ajit Pyati. Uh, he is a senior advisor at Iradi and a former uh, IMD uh, director general uh, Indian medical uh, director general at Indian Meteorological Department. Uh, 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 over to you, sir. Thank you, Nimisha. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jyoti Parikh, for your inaugural address, setting the right tone for this important session on climate adaptive heat stress, stress action plan for vulnerable communities in South Asia as a part of the Gobeshona Global Conference. It's, it's uh, very timely, and uh, I must compliment Irade for planning this session uh, with eminent speakers drawn from health sector, uh, from the active early warning system, uh, and also uh, practitioners, uh, national disaster management authorities, and also the civil society and the Red Cross, which is engaged in mitigation and adaptation of the stress action plan. As Dr. Jyoti Parikh has brought out, well, the heat is a direct I think, manifestation of the global warming. Impact in other sectors may take time, but it, it, it is straightforward. And this is what is being observed in the last decade, that last decade has been the warmest decade. And last six years have been the warmest years in the history of uh, last 200, 250 years since the instrumentation started recording the temperatures. We have temperatures in Arctic, Antarctic, which are rising at a phenomenal rate. In fact, eastern parts of Antarctica have recorded temperatures as high as 40 degrees centigrade. You must have see, heard about the extreme temperatures being reported from the British Columbia of Canada last year, 49.8 degrees centigrade. So it is unimaginable Enable a few years back that such extremes will take place. So, in fact, the IPCC IR6 report, when it was released, the Secretary General see, marked it as a core threat for humanity. The alarm bells are deafening and the evidence is irrefutable. 
ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज फ्रॉम फॉसिल फ्यूल बर्निंग एंड डिफोरेस्टेशन आर टॉकिंग आर प्लेनेट इज पुटिंग बिलियंस ऑफ द पीपल एट इमीजिएट रेस people in the developing and least developed countries are worst affected and so is the south asia now one good thing which has happened as far as heat wave is concerned that countries and the cities which have started implementing heat action plan have been able to bring down the mortality so this is as of now to manage the current temperatures ranges is okay but climate change is going to see lead to extremes which which probably we may not be able to anticipate as of now and we all know that each degree centigrade rise in temperature will exponentially results in, in the mortality and morbidity so we have to be prepared for the coming years when temperatures are expected to rise even 1.5 degree centigrade rise itself it, it, it is there but with the current trend it may be even higher than that so our heat action plans have to be now much more targeted we have to move from the general heat action plan which was done in the first level of heat action plans in say last 5 to 10 years we have to go into a risk and vulnerability based heat action plan up to a ward level and for that the mapping of and the vulnerability analysis of the cities another important thing which needs to be worked out for each city and each state and district is the thresholds no single threshold across the country uh, can be applicable we have seen that and uh, uh, it varies depending on the local capacity local geography and also uh, the measures which which the, the city or the state is able to take so we have to be there and then the urbanization is going to compound Uh, the challenges urban heat islands along with the the extreme heat can result in temperatures exceeding 50 to 55 degrees centigrade in pockets of the city where poor reside and they they are going to be the worst affected it's not only the mortality the morbidity productivity livelihood all these factors needs to be factored in our next phase of heat stress management and i'm sure uh, with the experts today the panelists will be able to touch some of these areas of course the early warnings will be always a good major take preventive actions and preparedness and the meteorological services in south asia are gearing up to provide forecast right from the medium range 4 to 5 days to the now cast for the location specific and this is a good sign and these needs to be factored in our uh, planning and also in heat action plan so warning driven uh, action plan should start uh, part and another important thing is it, it's not going to be just the health sector which is which is there health capacity is important but it is multi institutional and multi departmental intra departmental coordination is also the need uh, adequate supply of electricity water all these things are equally important uh, the school timings and work in work labor department all these needs to work in unison uh, to minimize the adverse impact of heat stress so with these opening remarks once again i welcome my esteemed panelists and the participants and uh, i am sure we'll have a very uh, forward looking presentations uh, and will all of us will benefit by the deliberations thank you so much for giving me this opportunity may i request uh, boy to present this work or to you roy hello uh, you muted hello everyone hello everyone uh, i uh, welcome Uh, Mr. Rohit Magotra for the thematic presentation for the session. He is uh, Deputy Director Irabe and leads urban development and climate change work here. He he was also a principal investigator for the project Climate Adaptive Actions to Manage Heat Stress in Indian Cities, which was supported by IDRC. Over to you, sir, Rohit sir. Thank you, Nimisha, uh, and thank you, Tiyagi sir, for giving 
for chairing the session and acting uh, at such a short notice. And my uh, thanks goes to all the panelists uh, who have actually agreed to to, so to to contribute to this session in a short notice. Uh, so today's session is is being organized Irade, in collaboration with South Asian Metallurgical Association. And the session title is Climate Adaptive Users Action Plans for Vulnerable Communities in South Asia. I think uh, the kind of uh, context which uh, Dr. Parikh has built uh, in, 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 in terms of uh, the code right on the humanity and the need for uh, the action with respect to the climate change is uh, so apt. And as she rightly said, you know, the, the, the evidence which the scientists have to generate and then to the policymakers uh, for action. So there has been a tremendous effort with respect to that and uh, we, we are lucky to have her herself being part of she was uh, herself being part of this Nobel laureate team which was awarded the Nobel prize uh, so with respect to the topic so heat is also something you know which needs a lot of push not many people in south asia are ready to accept that heat is a uh, heat, heat is a heat is a urgent topic for which action is required uh, heat in particular in the South Asia is being taken as way of life. We have been living with this heat for so many centuries and so we'll continue to live with it. So that's a kind of a sentiment which is there generally with the, most of the agencies which we get in touch with you initially starting the work with respect to the heat action plan. So Irade's work in uh, climate resilience is as old as uh, 20 years but with respect to the Heat resilience work we initiated around six years back and looking at, you know, how do we generate more evidence for the policymakers? How do we uh, look into the spatial vulnerability of the heat uh, incorporated in the action plans? So there has been a wonderful work being done by the National Disaster Management Agency, uh, India, with respect to developing the guidelines for the heat action plan. And, and uh, we have uh, the states of Odisha, which was a pioneer in uh, developing the first heat action plan for the state in the country. And uh, Ahmedabad has been a great example for the cities. And that work was uh, so, uh, done by IITH, Indian Institute of Public Health, uh, Gandhi Nagar, in collaboration with NRDC. So we have Polash with us, who will also speak about the work which was done on uh, setting up the tone for heat action within Indian cities. So uh, with respect to the need for climate adaptive heat action plans, so I think that's where Irade contributed to the agenda of uh, 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 looking into the finer aspects of the climate, you know, how it is going to further impact the heat wave and further going to lead the heat stress and, uh, and looking at the spatial vulnerability, not at the broad level of a district of the city, but looking at the finer uh, spatial vulnerabilities at the broad level uh, so that, you know, the, the targeting of the population for the heat action is, is, is done, uh, uh, done with greater attention and with greater impact. And the gender sensitivity, how do you in, in, inculcate the uh, components of the gender sensitivity while implementing the heat action plan? So as a part of our work, we uh, did this work supported by International Development Research Center of uh, Canada. So we supported us in, uh, in doing the research and also uh, designing and developing the climate adaptive action plans for the cities of uh, Bhubaneswar, Rajkot, and Delhi. Uh, Delhi, to some extent, we did this work for the New Delhi Municipal uh, Council, but also implemented a lot of our measures with respect to the heat action with the government of Delhi. So I think uh, the tone with respect to uh, the need for heat action plan, I think that's uh, fairly set up by both uh, Professor Tiagi and uh, Dr. Parekh. So I think these events are uh, becoming now kind of very frequent. And uh, also the extremes are something which humans or even meteorologists haven't thought earlier that it, that, that is possible. And, uh, and the catastrophic example was the last year in the light in Canada when, you know, the whole village got uh, uh, under fire and, and the temperature extreme was as high as 26 degrees centigrade above the normal temperature. So that's the kind of a challenge which, which, uh, which uh, you know, many other geographies are going to face across uh, the world. And, uh, and uh, South Asia is obviously being a located in the subtropical region. 
it's likely to have uh, uh, very high impacts and also looking at our vulnerability. So it's, it's a very, uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, apt and urgent to take action with respect to the heat. How do we adapt to it? How do we look at the interventions, uh, not from just long-term point of view, but also looking at the short-term measures, what is required now? And uh, also, you know, a cross-country approach, you know, how do we learn uh, from each other within the South Asia? I think that's something which is very important. So, uh, and there is uh, where, you know, uh, while uh, there's a lot of work which has been done in India, but uh, there is a lot more which can be done in the other regions of the South Asia. So this is the, uh, this slide is about uh, the temperatures today, you know, what's happening in Delhi and across the country. But uh, I'll share that, you know, the temperature extremes are very much evident in most part of the country, especially in the north. So uh, we have severe heat waves happening in the Himachal Pradesh, which is kind of a, uh, which is kind of a, you know, a summer, uh, uh, like, uh, it's like a hill station in most of the locations in Himachals are apt for uh, being called as a hill station. So we have severe heat waves in, in reported in Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir in as early as March. You know, that is something which hasn't happened earlier. We, we never had the deviation of the temperatures, which are going above 10 degrees, above 8 degrees. And a classic case is a 13 degrees departure uh, in, in Ekatra, a small tourist town in the state of GNK. And uh, Delhi, for the first time, you know, we have persisting temperature above 40 degrees for last couple of days. And this is something which is across the Delhi, the temperatures are much beyond even the severe heat wave level. So, Delhi is facing severe heat waves right now in terms of the temperature, which is deviating 10 degrees beyond normal. And that's what is happening with the maximum temperature in the country. So it's a clear cut you know, example. You know, the, the summers which the, in Delhi, you, we don't have uh, severe heat waves generally before May was the period. You know, in the month of the May, that is when the Delhi will expect the heat waves and a very hot season. Uh, but that, and this is the situation which is uh, something which is this, which is like even not even an end of the March, you know, so that's where, you know, the climate and the climate comes into the picture and the climate science. So we looked at, you know, this, uh, when we looked at the climatology of these cities, we looked at the past 30 degrees, uh, 30 years temperature, both maximum and the minimum, and that data was uh, sourced from the IMD. So there is a clear uh, case, uh, we will see that, you know, there is a, a rise in temperature and uh, there are rise in number of heat events also. And this kind of evidence is, is, is actually there for all the three cities which we are looking at, Rajkot, Bhubaneswar, as well as uh, uh, the Delhi. So the heat is something which is coming earlier and it, this is something which is not predicted earlier, you know, that you, you were not expecting, you know, that temperature will touch 41.7 degree the, and uh, and deviating 10 degrees beyond the normal temperature. So that is a story, you know. So the point is that, you know, the summer is arriving much earlier, the extremes are going much higher, and that's where we need to uh, really need to look at action, what is required to prepare the, prepare, uh, the South Asia with respect to the rising temperature. I'm sure there are similar trends being observed in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, but, uh, and, may, uh, and might be later in the presentation, we have some more uh, such evidence is coming from the panelists too. So uh, this was a warmest decade as per the IPCC, as per the NOAA records. So ever warmest ever decade. So temperature is rising, the extremes are rising, and the impact is also rising. In terms of the vulnerable population, the South Asia has the largest vulnerable population with respect to the heat stress and the heat waves, both. Uh, this is something which is uh, the issue of heat waves uh, came was like, you know, reported, uh, it, it become actually major story when the Chicago heat waves happened the way back in 1995 and where, you know, there were 79 reported heat related deaths happened within the five days and that's where that tension start trying to work the issue of the heat and this is a classic uh, slide where there's a mass grave in Chicago of the heat waves. And uh, so many people died because of the unprecedented heat wave and the city was not prepared. So heat wave is something which is also touching uh, the temperate countries. Uh, the Moscow 
it reported 55,736 people died because of the heat waves that, that was in 2010. So European heat wave, again, the death toll was more than 70,000 in, in 2002. So the, the, uh, the point is that heat is a killer and it's, it's a silent killer and it's also killing people across the globe and not just in India. And uh, similarly, Ahmedabad, it reported deaths 1,344 uh, excess deaths. This is Karachi, we had 700 people died in three waves in Karachi and that's where the action towards Karachi election plan started. So this is, uh, this is something which I am just sharing with you to, uh, to share, you know, the how heat is not something which has to be taken lightly. Heat is a killer and it has to be recognized as a disaster widely. Uh, so just some more examples. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, in in this is the dry world temperature in Pakistan in Jakabawa, uh, touching fifty degrees centigrade. You know this is the dry world temperature where you know the human survival is not possible, and that's where the climate change is actually uh, showing that you know a lot of places across the world in Africa in South Asia will have more wet world degree. Uh, days rise in temperature, which are beyond the uh, the survival temperature for the human beings. So, you know, there there is a uh, so there so these kinds of uh, incidences are likely to become common, and that's where the challenge is that how do we kind of uh, prepare ourselves to the both in terms of mitigation and reduction part of it. So this is uh, the Canada heat wave, which is like uh, affecting the sea life. So it is like sea, sea creatures because of the warming, ocean, warming of the oceans died. Then we have Spain heat waves where, you know, there is a, this is a livelihood loss. This is loss to biodiversity. This is loss to yield to the uh, horticulture yield. So this is Egypt heat wave affecting the mango yield. So it is affecting all facets of life and not just human health. It's, it's affecting productivity. It's affecting livelihoods and and the danger is that you know uh, that uh, that uh, if there is no preparedness to to uh, to uh, to address this, then uh, obviously with in South Asia with a lot of vulnerable population, vulnerable poor, and more so in the urban areas, we really stand to lose. So heat wave is is something where definitions vary. This is uh, definition with respect to the India uh, issued by the IMD where. Uh, we have heat waves uh, criteria for plains, hilly areas, and the coastal areas. So, uh, hilly areas, the heat wave is uh, is actually issued when the temperature touches 30 degrees, and for the coastal area, is 37 degrees and 47, 40 degrees centigrade for the plains. So, similarly, such kind of a criteria needs these are representative uh, for Indian Indian context. What I am sure these kind of uh, similar uh, temperature thresholds are also there. And there is a need to develop further these thresholds at city level and the uh, and the finer scale so that you know the action is uh, taken and uh, the heat waves uh, warnings alerts are being issued which are very important for action with respect to the heat waves. I'll just skip some of the slides and bring you to the heat wave action plan. So heat wave action plan is that uh, that is a tool actually which is adaptation measures. Uh, which is uh, not a very uh, rocket science, but it is a implementation framework to uh, implementation and the action framework, which helps us to reduce the extreme heat, uh, how to reduce the uh, ex heat, uh, extreme heat response. And so there is an intercoordination between the departments. There are heat alerts which are issued, which flow to the departments. And based on that, you know, the actions are decided. Uh, for the departments and for the citizens to be prepared and to reduce the mortality. So the early warning coordination and the emergency response system, these are kind of three pillars of this heat action plan. And that's, and this is what is a tool which we think is important uh, to actually adapt to the increasing actions of the heat stress. So this is uh, in the context of the South Asia. So if we look at the, uh, heat action plan development in South Asia. So obviously, uh, not many cities uh, in South Asia have heat action plan. So uh, right now, uh, so Karachi is the only city in the South Asia which has heat action plan. There is no other city which has heat action plan. So the broad heat action plans with respect to 
the actions related to the heat, they are part of like climate change strategy action plan, but they are not exclusive action plan for Bangladesh. Uh, Sri Lanka and Mali have country level action plans as well. So, but there are no such extensive action plan which look into the heat stress thresholds level for various states, provinces, other cities. Uh, so this is something which is, uh, is something which talks about the success of implementing the heat action plans and and thanks to NDMA and the coordinative efforts of the state disaster management authorities and the city and state authorities. You know the, uh, with the launch of heat action plans, the deaths have substantially come down from in thousands to just a single digit number in the last year. You know, that's the impact which has been realized in India with respect to the heat action plan. But uh, so, so we feel that, you know, this is a critical tool uh, where, which needs to be adopted for the several uh, South Asian cities and, and the states, districts. So I'm just sharing a small example of, you know, what orient, orienting to what the climate adaptive heat action plan and how it helps in further uh, uh, what are the strategies which are part of the heat action plan? So, uh, just uh, an overview of, I'll just give you a broad overview of a heat action plan. So, it's important to capture, uh, these are the action plans which are at the city level. So, it's important to uh, understand the social demographic composition of the city. Urbanization is a major driver. So, that is also important to understand. So, that is what needs to be captured while developing any action plan. And also uh, taking into account the historical overview of the heat waves or heat related mortality and the mortality with respect to the city. So that's the first uh, record which should be prepared while developing heat, any heat action plan. Uh, second, being part of the climate adaptive heat action plan, we see that you know climatological variance is very important parameter. So there we look into the, the temperature and the relative humidity uh, of over a period of last 20 to 30 years to look at you know what 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 is the kind of a trend we are seeing in terms of the rising temperatures uh, so that this is this data is available uh, with the meteorological department and that should be sourced to look at what kind of a trends which are happening both in terms of temperature uh, the maximum temperature the minimum temperature and also the relative humidity uh, the morning as well as the evening levels of the humidity because relative humidity is also a critical component of the heat stress especially for the coastal cities so, so that's where we look at the trend analysis, you know, and, and this, and there is, thereby you, we can relate it, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, there is a critical need for, uh, for taking action uh, and also an evidence for the policy makers. Uh, and uh, uh, that's, that's important. Uh, this is the hotspot mapping because the temperature, uh, ambient air temperature within the city also varies. So it, it can vary even up to five to seven degrees within the city. So it's not, uh, so for example, uh, if, if the location I am, let's say the temperature is uh, uh, 39 degree and uh, it's, uh, it, it, the maximum temperature is 39 degrees, but there will be several locations in Delhi which are already reporting a temperature of 43 to 44 degrees. So obviously it's important that we also identified the, the, spatial, uh, the spatial heat hotspot maps within the city. So that uh, the action uh, can be taken in those areas where which, which are being reported, uh, which have higher temp relatively higher temperature compared to the, uh, the available station. Uh, you know, they, there are limited meteorological stations which uh, record the temperature. So it's important to look at the spatial from the spatial point of view, you know, where your uh, hot spots are located within the city, which can be done through the GAS hotspot. But ambient air mapping is, is helpful. If we do such campaigns, it's, it's, it's definitely possible to assess the spatial differentiation of the temperature, which helps us to identify the heat hotspots within the city. The very, very critical component of any action plan is to identify vulnerability, uh, to identify the vulnerable areas or vulnerable groups. So that's where there is a need to look at, you know, where the slum population is, the low income group population is, and to assess the kind of uh, urban infrastructure services facilities they have, access to water, the kind of housing they have, the access to electricity, access to wealth centers. That is very critical component uh, with respect to assessing the vulnerability. 
uh, impact because uh, heat is impacting and that's where you know we need to highlight you know that uh, it's impacting uh, the various uh, uh, the, the the various uh, the, it has various types of impact but uh, on the health library and productivity but heat heat action plan should be broader also further be broad should be further broadened in looking at the assessment of you know the heat stress on the uh, on the uh, on the livestock also looking at the the fires incidences which are happening within the city uh, so it should be also uh, it should go beyond the human health and parameters but also look into broadly other issues which uh, which will need attention in case of the severity of the heat wave or the heat stress a stakeholder mapping and capacity building that's a critical component because one has to identify you know that uh, if there is a heat alert then who has to take action what kind of communication has to go who will take that action uh, the responsibility so it's a responsibility matrix and that can be built only if you understand who are the stakeholders who can help in designing and implementing the heat action plans so heat action plans also documents the mitigation and the adaptation strategies which should be taken by the city uh, the short term approach medium term and the long term approach though right now our heat action plans they focus more on the emergency management and and looking at the short term actions what uh, the it should be broadened to again include the long term uh, options in several options related to urban planning are also important and the critical component is also looking at the dissemination monitoring and evaluation you know when you are implementing action plans then what what kind of a results you are getting from the field so this is public outreach is important so these are broadly the uh, nine ten components of any action plan and uh, i think it's fairly achievable and uh, these guidelines are now uh, available and also as a part of work we are ma making this uh, available to the cities and the countries we are working with uh, moving forward so uh, there are uh, a lot of resources with respect to same and sure nrdc and uh ifrc they have also done a lot of work with respect to it they will also sharing some of experiences what this is where i think the action is required to to kind of increase our preparedness with respect to the uh, heat action uh i won't uh, touch uh, uh, won't cover a lot of this but i this is just an evidence where you see you know the number of heat days rising when we look at the uh, the heat wave incidences in the city of the rajkot so if you look into the uh, decadal trend you know this is a very clear evidence so in 1970 decade of 1971 to 80 there were only six heat wave events reported but if you go to the 2011 21 there are 66 such events uh, reported and more so in terms of the hot days the number of the hot days are increasing for example in case of delhi so uh, out of this 90 days heat season there are more than uh, 45 to 50 hot days now being observed which is like you know temperature crossing 40 degrees so that's that's something which is very clear evidence and this evidence uh, is is clearly showcases you know uh, the need for adaptation to the heat action plan uh, this is something trend analysis as i talking about looking at the climatology so what we also observe that heat is heat season is arriving early you know so march is relatively heater in the cities and uh, so it's a shift in terms of you know early heat waves in in these cities and and these are the trends uh, we also found there's an increase in minimum temperatures other than the maximum temperature so this is a part of the climatology which i was talking about uh, so vulnerability this is an important uh, focus of any heat action plan and it's important to identify the vulnerability at uh, at at a unit uh, for example a ward level unit or even going down further to identify a few pockets within the city. So uh, the most vulnerable areas which we found with respect to the heat action because of the uh, several issues, uh, infrastructure issues and their ability to cope with it. So slums and scattered settlements, they are definitely needs a high focus. The areas which don't have access to water and sanitation, uh, minimal presence of household amenities, the areas which are relatively hotter uh, the urban heat islands within the cities, urban heat hotspots, industrial belts. So these are the areas which need attention uh, when we are looking at the heat action uh, plans. Then vulnerable groups. Uh, this this mapping is is something which is important to identify. You know where the action is uh, required uh, 
uh, first and foremost and and that's where a lot of work has to be done so economically weaker section elderly children pregnant women women themselves both indoor and outdoors both are vulnerable uh, people who have comorbidity so all these uh, are the part of the vulnerable group so this becomes very important when you look at the city or uh, action plans and as a measure of vulnerability this is the index which uh, we have developed to look at the vulnerability so while we did our surveys we looked into sanitation you know access to toilets access to water frequency of the water supply electricity also the symptoms which are reported by the population previously access to health health infrastructure transportation you know how they are how, what are the modes of transport which are available cooking practices whether happening indoors or the outdoors ventilation is very critical factor because uh, that uh, if in case of uh, lack of air circulation the heat stress increases housing type housing roof whether it's a top roof right awareness so there there has to be a combination of several such factors to look at the vulnerability and that's where the action has to be then further devised by the uh, city authorities and the civil society so this is such some such maps which can be generated these are ward level maps where we look at you know the areas you know, where there are issues which related to housing access to water so a lot of reds you see so you know so these are the wards which are prioritized further by the municipal corporation to take action where there is no access to water there should be supplied water where there is no access to electricity there should be supplied electricity you know so these this is where you know the cities uh, municipal authorities they are constrained in terms of their resources so these these actually help them to prioritize and take action so you know these are the maps which we produced for the cities for the action uh, so huge losses in terms of economy lot of so already poor are reported huge monthly wage loss uh, uh, and uh, these losses may vary but definitely the losses are higher uh, there is a productivity loss to the tune of even 25% productivity hours because in loss and uh, we have looked into the awareness you know the awareness also is an important component where people know that you know that extended heat stress can lead to uh deaths and what kind of a symptoms uh, one should uh, uh, one should watch for that you know that there is a heat stroke or not so a lot of work which is required in terms of early warning thresholds you know at what level you know the mortality starts in the in the city so this uh, so the work which we did with the rnc so they lowered the heat wave by half a degree so earlier it was like uh, it was 41 degree when the yellow alert was issued what now they started 0.5 degree so there is uh, so this is important because uh, one has to see you know how how the mortality is happening within the city and need to create such threshold so that the mortality and morbidity can be avoided uh, so this is a framework you know how the heat action plan works so so there is an imd alert which goes to the rajpur municipal corporation to the commissioner and then it goes further to various departments you know hospital department labor department water department uh, transport department so uh, so there are a lot of actions which has to be taken with respect to this uh, so this is an example of the 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 during the season but there are other activities which have to be done before the season and post the season so hospitals have to look into you know their supplies link their workers labor have to be provided in the shade uh their work hours uh, can be shifted providing water tankers to the slum so uh, maintaining power is critical so there are several departments which have roles and uh, that being mapped so each is assigned responsibility to take action so for example public health manager they have to identify vulnerable areas ensure adequate inventory of medical supplies you know health emergencies is this is the most critical component i would say with respect to managing the intermediate emergencies Uh, we are the public health uh, managers have a critical role the hospitals the doctors the paramedical staff the frontline workers even the pharmacies so uh, so more they are aware of the actions and more they are prepared so we will be able to arrest the mortality we can do so these are some of the roles and responsibility or these this is available and just showcasing but as i said that uh, uh, these are some of the actions which we took and which are adopted so there is a hoardings are posters on leds tvs and distribution of the pamphlets 
awareness workshops for traffic police they are highly vulnerable street hawkers construction workers school children opening gardens you know uh, during the heat season which were generally closed in the afternoons uh, availability of the water sheds so even the cool roofs need to be cooler so a lot of work is being done in india with respect to the cool roofs uh, you know a provision of this buses uh, you know when they transit so uh, they they are actually kind of uh, uh, the, the passengers uh, they they actually are the continue wear the heat when they are traveling so you know uh, provision of water points and uh, oral rehydration salt at construction site bus stands you know uh, also awareness through the political campaigns so water tanker so you know uh, communication to them so a lot of interventions but they are also very simple interventions which dr parikh also highlighted they are simple interventions if implemented they can actually check the mortality uh, what also uh, looking at the medical preparedness uh, and and monitoring analysis you know how how they are faring so there are several measures which could be adopted as i said that current focus is more on the short term a major from the management point of view what more could be done in terms of long term measures with respect to the urban planning green spaces uh, nature based solutions so some of the things which we need to uh, uh, so it's not like uh, you know uh, one jacket fits all model what lot of a uh, 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 lot of cultural uh, aspects with respect to the work practices and also housing designs they they like chajja courtyard they have been part of the south asian architect they need to be uh, kind of retained and not just follow or ape the western practices of glass based buildings and and uh, with low ventilation and increasing use of the air conditioning air conditioning itself leads to lot of uh, rise in uh, the temperatures and leading to urban to the urban heat island so so, so so there are uh, so it's not uh, something we are we are to take like uh, uh, i would say like lot of investment has to be done with respect to uh, taking action what uh, if if there is a concerted approach coordination and uh, there are uh, and also uh, a commitment from the city state agencies and the national government so this mortality uh, mortality and the morbidity can be arrested and uh, and it it it's not only just for the vulnerable population but the gdp of the country is also being affected because of the rise in uh, heat stress and the heat action and that's where uh, the countries have to kind of uh, ensure that the proper action is taken and the uh, heat waves and the heat rising heat stress is not being taken lightly uh, but at the same level if uh, if a concerted effort is taken by the government civil society citizens uh and the related groups so uh, it is definitely the heat action plan is a very strong tool to to arrest the heat wave deaths so there are several things there are several campaigns uh, these are some examples this is an advisory uh, you can we have issued advisories to the people these have been issued in the uh, local languages uh, so these can be translated this is freely available as a resource if you want you can take it there are other resources also but Uh, this can be used uh, i won't touch this what uh, again medical stakeholders is an important component the doctors medical practitioners being uh, sensitized to the action uh, so that's where a lot of work has been done as a part of our work uh, similarly that and, and this is some examples of the rajkot where you know they put the hoardings on the roads advising them and rmc also identified you know which are the vulnerable pocket Uh, you know ensuring supply of water available to the city so these are example of the ors being available so uh, medical stakeholder train is a free resource which can be used and translated for uh, by the south asian countries to increase preparedness among the hospitals these are the examples of the plan and we are taking this further work uh, to the south asia with the partners international center for climate change and development icad uh, bangladesh Uh, which is also the organizer of the gavishana and uh, with urban health and climate resilience uh, center of excellence surat which is a partner for surat and slike interest which is a partner for the sri lanka so we are taking these uh, gender sense inclusion of gender sensitive and uh, spatial detection plans to south asian cities and i'm sure uh, through this platform we will also get to work with a uh, lot of other partners within the other south asian cities 
uh, moving forward, uh, I we the Sahin South Asia Heat Health Information Network. Uh, we are uh, this is a two years old network, and we have been regularly uh, doing the networking and information sharing uh, as a part of this initiative. Uh, uh, we we are we regularly organizing organize master classes and have a news mailer with respect to the heat stress. So uh, together we can, and I'm sure if, if we, we, we uh, as, as a South Asia, we have a common future and also for a climate change and addressing the climate change, we also need to have a common collaboration platforms to come together and address this rising impact of heat stress and particularly focus our work to the vulnerable communities. Thank you. Thank you, so, thank you so much, Rohit, sir. Uh, next speaker for the session is uh, Dr. Vikas Desai. Uh, uh, she's... Nimisha, if we can have some quick comments from uh, Chair. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Rohit, uh, for sharing the work being done by Iradi uh, and uh, offer to extend it to the South Asian partners. This is very much required and there are now many such forums which, which encourages the collaboration and because this is one thing because the weather and the extreme hazards, they don't have any political boundaries and South Asian region is, is very much closely she gets affected. As you have brought out already, the three states are experiencing heat waves. So we have a uh, right from Afghanistan to Bhutan. Of, most of these countries uh, are, are the next target of the heat waves. So we have to start sensitizing these countries also about imminent danger of heat waves. And uh, another part is that there are other partners like you have mentioned Sahil, uh, which is very a very good platform where the knowledge partners, uh, users, practitioners, uh, all, all uh, to share their experiences and develop capacities, awareness. And the South Asian Meteorological Association also is, in a, is in a professional uh, body which promotes uh, basic science uh, in, in meteorology with a focus for the society for their safety and uh, sustainable development. We are happy that in today's uh, meeting, Sama is a co-host sponsor, and we have eminent scientists from Bangladesh giving presentation on the heat waves over Bangladesh. So this is a I'd like to compliment Irade and Sama uh, for taking up this. Uh, we now have a very uh, practitioner uh, on the ground, Dr. Vikas Desai. She she is. Uh, been uh, championing the cause of um, such initiatives at, 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 the, at the ground level and uh, has uh, she led this initiative in Surat City, uh, a city which is uh, unique in many ways, very progressive city and uh, it, that can be a good example for many urban centers which can take up similar work, not so much dependent on the central agencies or outside but developing local capacities and implementing local plans. So this is, is a very good example. And Surat is, is a little different from the typical heat wave action plan, which has been discussed of Ahmedabad and many other inland cities, which is semi-coastal city. So we'll be happy to listen to his our experiences and how many coastal cities will can benefit from this. Okay, because yes, I go to you. Thank Sir, you. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, Nimisha will uh, just uh, read a small bio profile yeah. and then okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Vikas Desai is currently the Honorary Technical Director of Urban Health and Climate Resilience Center of Excellence, Surat. And uh, she has served as professor and head of the Community Medicine Department at Government Medical College, Surat. Uh, she has engaged with uh, several state-level projects on public health, climate, and uh, health resilience. And uh, she has actively contributed to the Heat and Health Action Plan for the city of Surat. Over to you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nimisha. Thank you, Dr. Tyagi and 
Rohit Bhai. Uh, I'm happy to talk about our local experience as I believe that we learn from global and national experience, but ultimately it is to be translated into a local uh, format which can be operationalized. And it is known that every city is different, every population of city is also different, and the administration also, efficacy of administration also is different. And even the chemistry, uh, multi-stakeholder collaboration chemistry is also different. And all these are very important for the any action plan for the city. Several times, times it has been mentioned that health is not the only outcome. I also agree that health is not the only outcome, but it is the outcome which ultimately uh, leads to action, which ultimately leads to emotion, to plan action. And that's why, it, and, and a good tool for advocacy. And that's why we don't call it heat action plan. We say heat and health action plan for Surat City. Coming to the next, oh, it's stuck up. I will again um, put it. No, it's not moving. I'm sorry, I, I'll do it again. Is it visible? I hope now it is visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sorry, can you can you uh, expand it, ma'am? I'm doing okay. it. Thanks, ma'am. Okay, this is about a little bit about Surat. It is the largest city in India, eighth largest city, fourth fastest growing city. You have highest migration rate in proportion. It is termed as economic capital of Gujarat state with diamond and textile industries predominant. But we have several other mega industries also in the city. We are the smart city with on fourth rank and we are the clean city on rank two, which we are very proud of because we were the filthiest city of the country in past. Uh, it is a historic city, uh, even historic trade city, I would say. Municipality was also established in 1852 and it's a it has a progressive local self-government because we face so many challenges. We have to uh, keep up our movement going and that's why we need to add up the several ex actions including what we have done. It is a flood prone city with uh, uh, 25 floods in 100 years on history and high risk climate change category. We are in high risk climate change category. Uh, as far as flood is concerned, uh, world has known us by in 94 by plague episode and uh, flood relationship. So I'm describing the actions uh, of the Surat, under Surat Municipal Corporations in the Surat city, which helped facilitated the building up of the climate, uh, uh, sorry, heat and health action plan. First was we, it, it formed a trust that means focus on the health and climate. This registration of a learning of organization is very important for every city. Doers cannot do this job. They are so busy in their do administration that they cannot cope up with that. Another important thing is even if you <clears throat> hire a consultancy, this is not a one-time job. So it is not a static phenomenon, climate change. And that's why you will have to track the climate, the health, and then interrelation and in spatial uh, variations and go on uh, updating your action plan so that you are better off next time. And that's why you need some local organization to support the administrative organization, which was done through USCRC. It was uh, settled by, uh, by the local self-government itself, and it is public-private partnership uh, mode trust. Uh, trust. And uh, 
it was institutional. It is an, an outcome of the project, which was Urban Health and Climate Resilience Center under SN project of Rockefeller Feller Foundation between 2013 and 16. And it has worked on several assignments which are related to urban health, which itself is a new arena. So we need to learn and develop so many other models for the urban health implementation as well as climate. So first thing which was done was to analyze the climate trend of the city. This city originally was known as a very comfortable city except monsoon. We, we did not have low or high extremes of temperature in the city. We never experienced it. And as far as the heat wave is concerned, which is a global and local phenomena, everyone has experienced that the things are changing. The seasonality is changing. The time, time, time of the high temperature, low temperature is changing. Even monsoon is changing. And uh, things are changing very fast. But the thing is, people think that it's, it's not much in my city. It is somewhere else which is very high in, for city like Surat. That is one challenge. And second is, people accept that it is going to happen. What, what more we can do? Let us try to live with it. And when, we, when people think about it, the first thing which comes is a survival action. And then comes the, the, the health action. And then comes the development action. So we analyze the... Uh, High temp maximum temperature, high temperature days, as well as heat index, because we are coastal city, our temp humidity goes up to even 91%. And that's why we found that 2010 was worst. And after that, every year we get high heat index. We could also relate, though it was not very high in thousands, we could also relate the temperature and all cause mortality. And we showed that there is a rising tre trend of mortality all cause mortality when temperature increases and when especially in heat wave days. Even intracity variation, as it was mentioned, is, is now established in the city. Almost four degree variations in the temperature in various zones. We, are, we have nine now administrative zones and seashore is more comfortable temperature wise compared to the other area. But if you convert it into heat index, even seashores are a difficult area to, to stay with. But the demographic characteristics of the population also is different in different zones. And that decides the public health vulnerability, even the heat and health vulnerability. We also mapped out the practitioners because our focus was first on health and along with that, the heat. So we mapped out the practitioners in public sector and private sector. And we also assessed how much, it, what is their experience of dealing with heat related morbidity and mortality and even a treatment. And based on that, we and, and our analysis, we, we also prepared a training module for them and we work with the private sector also and public sector also. The fourth thing we started was a forecast system, which we started receiving from IMD and we started working on it. So even this time is the heat wave time for Surat city, 37 degree plus. Um, to begin with, it was 40 degree. And, be, and uh, unfortunately, uh, this forecast received from the organizations do not, cannot forecast humidity. So this city, coastal cities, will have to uh, calculate it, its heat index day to day using the uh, available information of the um, humidity and temperature, and then, then work on it. Then, uh, say 13th March, we, since 13th March, we started getting information about the heat waves coming up. So what was done, these are the action points. What was done, immediate short-term action points. What was done was to issue guidelines to the hospitals to uh, for adequate water supply, for ice packs, for heat comfort ambience, for reminder to the patients for hydration, adequate medicines available for the management of cases if they arrive and to maintain the records of the patients. Same, it is the primary health care, which is also sensitized with information. Uh, some of them are common and some of, it also includes the um, IEC corners and uh, the presentations for the community. This is one of the example of urban health center having a a corner for heat and health information, as well as ORS corner and the display of the 
presentations to the community for the in the waiting launch for the patients and related information. These are some of the handouts which are also distributed to the community booklets and um, pamphlets. And these are on social media in local language to uh, share with community immediate action, how to protect themselves, what is the importance of hydration and what is the importance of protecting themselves from the direct sunlight. Okay, next, what was what is done, which is important, probably it is only in Surat, is the Smart Surat Disease Control Portal. So we have several portals of, of the health reporting, including National Portal of IDSP, but then we want heat wave information or the increasing morbidity. It, directly, it's very difficult to get information about the heat wave related health problems. This is known to everyone. And that's why even the increased number of morbidity or sick people is enough to act. And that's why this is the portal which gives us day-to-day -day mapping and clustering of the cases. And we know where to work and how to work. This was originally pre not, pre uh, in, this had no inclusion of heat wave related morbidity, which is now, it is the reuse of the available uh, portal, which now we are doing and a heat wave is added to it. Then, <clears throat> as it was mentioned, we need a, a, a administrative setup for the heat wave action. And we have steering committee formed by Surat Municipal Corporation where all departments are represented, but health has a higher responsibility because they have to act immediately. And this is about interdepartmental co convergence, which is the, the most important component of the tool. And we need to facilitate that and it, it has to function well. And that, that is the steering committee's important role. Um, everyone talks about the climate change is the threat to the human society and heat waves are the most dangerous amongst the natural hazards. Ultimately, it needs to be translated into heat and health action plan. And it also indicates that we need to add local flavor, local experience, local conditions for better results of heat and health action plan. Thank you. I think I could convey the look, uh, convince the people to, for the local action and the trend by which the local action can be taken. Thanks a lot. Ajit sir, your input sir. Thank you Dr. Desai for bringing out the importance of local action based on learning from the global and national developments and, and the knowledge. But ultimately, you know, each, each city, each location is unique in itself, both in terms of vulnerabilities and capacities. And these needs to be factored in, in any operational plan. Surat is a very good example where civil society, business community, and government, they are working in unison. And I wish many such more cities take up and learn from this example. Because anything driven by is government alone uh, cannot yield desired results where, so it has to be a, a joint initiative of uh, the government machinery, of course, but along with the local communities, you know, both business and, and the civil society. Thank you, Dr. Desai. I'm sure other cities in South Asia can learn a lot from Surat. Over to you, Nimisha. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, next speaker for the session is Dr. Manan. Uh, he is meteorological scientist at the Bangladesh Meteorological Department, where he analyzes meteorological data and information, and he conducts short, medium, and long-term weather forecasting and early warning management. Uh, he has authored more than 30 technical papers. Uh, over, over to you, uh, Dr. Manan. And let me also thank Dr. Manan for uh, joining us on a short notice, but it is very much important uh, that inputs from uh, National Meteorological Agencies on this important uh, area are, are shared with, with the larger community. So this is a good platform. 
on behalf of Sama also, I'd like to thank Dr. Nagar. Thank you. Dr. Mandan, floor is yours. Uh, Dr. Manan, uh, Dr. Manan, are you there? Uh, Nimisha, we can move to the next speaker. Yeah, in case uh, he is not able to start his question. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, while we wait, uh, while Mr. Manan joins, Dr. Manan joins, uh, let's move over to uh, Sri Anup Kumar Srivastava. He is Senior Consultant on Drought and Heatwave Expert at the National Disaster Management Authority. And uh, he was part of development of the National Agriculture Disaster Management Plan, where he assessed the impact of heatwave on agriculture. Over to you, uh, Sri Anup. Yeah, Anupji, you will be able to present, or we we do we take it to uh, we we can do it later. Anupji, uh, Nimisha, I think we can move to the next speaker. We can come back to Mr. Anup's presentation later. So uh, next speaker in the line is Mr. Polash Mukherjee. He is a Delhi-based researcher and policy advocacy professional with a significant experience in the area of environmental health and air quality management. As the lead of the Natural, uh, Natural Disaster Defense Council, work on air quality and climate resilience in India, he works closely with the national as well as the several regional and city governments in India on strengthening institutional capacities and building community resilience to dis climate disasters, including extreme heat. Polash is also recognized as a strategic leader in the field of air quality management in India. Over to you, Polash. Thank you, Namisha. Thank you, Dr. Tyagi. Uh, thank you, Rohit, and also uh, the other panelists. I hope I'm audible. Uh, is this clear enough? Yeah, good. Uh, yes. Welcome, Polash. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I don't have a slide deck to, to show. Uh, but I'll briefly touch upon some of the points that uh, that uh, I think should be discussed here. Uh, briefly touch upon uh, the history. I think uh, Rohit uh, has given a very good overlay of what how heat action planning in India began. But uh, our role as as an RDC was, uh, of course, in partnership with uh, the experts, Dr. Mavlankar uh, and his team at uh, the Indian Institute of Public Health, Gandhinagar. Uh, which is part of, uh, which is in itself part of the Public Health Foundation of India, uh, is to uh, work together since 2011 uh, on strengthening heat preparedness in the city of Ahmedabad. Uh, so before I get there, let me just quickly in introduce myself and my organization for uh, for uh, for participants who may not know me. Uh, so I. Uh, uh, like uh, like Namisha said, I lead the work on uh, climate resilience uh, for the India program for an organization called NRDC, so Natural Resources Defense Council. NRDC itself is a 50-year-old uh, organization working on the environment uh, based out of the US. Uh, it has uh, several international uh, programs uh, operating as well, including India and China. The India program is 10 years old. And in fact, the heat work is really what uh, an RDC began working on in India uh, way back in 2010. So that's just a little bit about, about the organization. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> like it's been mentioned before, uh, we did work to co-develop the uh, Ahmedabad Heat Action Plan back in 2011. And uh, it was first launched in 2013. 
This was built on the back of a severe heat wave in the summer of 2010, uh, where an estimated uh, 2,500 uh, mortalities were attributed to exposure to extreme heat. Uh, subsequently, uh, as uh, I'm sure uh, Anubji and others will talk about, uh, the uh, the National Disaster Management Authority uh, took up the helm of uh, coordinating and steering uh, national level heat action plans, uh, uh, and as well as breaking them down into several state and local level uh, counterparts. Uh, Ahmedabad's uh, pioneering heat action plan uh, focused local efforts on extreme heat uh, as a life-threatening public health issue. And that's where the role of IIPH really came in. Uh, the plan which deployed uh, heat early warning systems uh, also facilitated a strong and coordinated response to protect vulnerable populations, uh, health professional tra uh, training of health professionals, as well as uh, workshops with the media. Uh, and since 2011-2012, uh, when the when it was first rolled out, uh, we have also been able to successfully do a impact assessment, uh, which uh, which has been peer reviewed and published about. And uh, we are happy to note that uh, the heat action plan in Ahmedabad uh, has uh, it has uh, has helped avoid an estimated 1,100 deaths annually since the launch of the uh, of the heat action plan in uh, 2013. So one of the first questions that we investigated was who in Ahmedabad was the most vulnerable to extreme heat. And uh, as Rohit has very strongly demonstrated, uh, this is only uh, possible by trying to understand the granularities at the local level. So uh, we were able to survey the city's most uh, economically disadvantaged neighborhoods to understand who was most at risk during the heat waves. Uh, we, were, we, uh, we had consultations with outdoor workers, with medical professionals, and with city leaders to develop um, ways to reach out to those uh, hurt the worst by extreme heat. Older adults, young uh, children, people with uh, comorbidities, heart, lung, and other ailments, uh, pregnant women, uh, these were amongst the most heat vulnerable. Uh, following this, we were able to design a response plan specifically targeted at some of these uh, vulnerable groups, but most importantly, focused on rolling out an early warning system as well as uh, developing a strong and robust interagency coordination mechanism. Uh, following this, uh, because of the city's success, uh, Ahmedabad's work on heat resilience has become a model for uh, hundreds of other cities, both in within India, uh, and Ahmedabad has also received several uh, uh, awards for this work, um, specifically with the focus on heat action plans. Uh, <clears throat> At the national and uh, at subnational levels, it is uh, organizations like the National Disaster Management Authority, as well as the all-important forecasting mechanism of the in, uh, Indian Meteorological Department, India Meteorological Department, IMD. I must say, without having these, it would not have been possible to roll out uh, the, the heat action plans. Uh, and as well as uh, the government of India for making heat uh, a climate links disaster uh, that has been prioritized over the past several years. Uh, as uh, Rohit pointed out, uh, the number of reported mortalities has severely dropped from uh, over 2,000 a season to less than four, I think, single digits last year. <clears throat> so Indian cities uh, are on the front line of adaptation challenge. Uh, there's much to teach the world on how to adapt, the climate, adapt to climate change in equitable and sustainable ways. Uh, this is, again, something that uh, I think Jyoti Parikh ma'am referred to, uh, there are low cost and low tech solutions uh, which uh, were in the domain of traditional solutions, which are now coming back in a big way. Uh, there are also extremely effective uh, passive cooling solutions that NRDC is focusing on, such as cool roofs, uh, such as uh, building efficiency and thermal efficiency. Uh, there is a need for coordinated response action across government, civil society, affected communities as well as media. And uh, to have a widespread outreach to health professionals, affected communities, uh, uh, and specifically on recognizing and responding to heat-related illnesses, uh, HRIs, uh, as well as to build local, local ownership of these plans. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, I was very happy to hear uh, Dr. Vikas's presentation, and uh, I must say that Surat is uh, is definitely one one of the cities that is becoming a role model in this area. I just wanted to quickly touch upon some some uh, points or the way for some points of discussion, which I think would be important when you're talking about the way forward, especially and again, this is in the context of where we are in India, in Indian cities, and where we think we should go ahead uh, from here. The official statistics from the IMD as well as from the NDMA uh, say that over the past 40-year uh, uh, period, there have been almost about 17,000 deaths attributable to heat. 17,000 in a country of uh, 1, billion, 1 billion plus in India uh, is the number, is the official figure. Uh, why I'm bringing this up is that uh, there is a need to improve the systems uh, as well as the data on environmental health. And I put this very broadly uh, because the current focus here is on reducing mortality. While this has served us very well uh, right now and in the past five years as shown by the uh, gra graph of reducing mortality, uh, there is a need to look beyond the mortality mobility approach. And this is uh, to say that we need to also incorporate the economic and opportunity costs of extreme heat, the impact of livelihoods, as well as the impact on biodiversity and other aspects of human, uh, human health and environmental health. This is what where the focus should be increasingly uh, at, across the levels of administration, at the national, subnational, and local level. Uh, I bring up the first figure of 17,000 because uh, even, uh, and I, uh, I again point out to some of the slides shown before, uh, there were 50,000 plus deaths attributable to extreme heat in specific countries in a single year. What this points out is that uh, there most certainly are severe gaps in the record, in, the rec uh, in recording morbidity and mortality data, uh, specifically in attributing them to exposure to extreme heat. In many cases, these are extrapolated from all-cause mortality data, and there may be several gaps in capturing the actual extent of uh, extreme heat on human death, on human health. I was very happy to note the the uh, system that uh, Surat has developed uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the smart. Uh, I believe it was called the uh, the smart disaster, the smart disease control center in Surat. Mm. Again, this has been mentioned before, uh, but when we when we talk about most vulnerable sections, uh, the spatial identification of vulnerable communities uh, is very important. Uh, GIS mapping of hotspots of climate hazard uh, zones where uh, every year uh, that are affected by several different hazards, uh, as well as the identification of the most vulnerable sections, uh, not just in terms of categorization, but also in terms of number and in terms of attributes. Uh, why, I, why I say this is that in many, many cases, uh, these uh, sections of population that are the most vulnerable are often underrepresented uh, as well as uh, they are, uh, <clears throat> they are uh, mostly in the informal sector. So they are not uh, very well organized. Uh, they need uh, better uh, representation and better participation in the process not just of uh, of HAPs, of heat action plans, but also in administration in general. Uh, currently, the system of ha uh, heat action plans, uh, although is uh, uh, is fairly robust, but it is it remains very 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 top down. So there is uh, a need for developing avenues for participation of the general population, as well as of specialized institutions in building out a reiterative process of uh, strengthening heat action plans. And this is what I mean by uh, uh, revising them uh, in a temp on a temporal scale and strengthening them year on year uh, using locally gathered data. Uh, two more points. Uh, one is uh, the need for effective communication. So there is a need to mobilize targeted as well as trusted communication that on a sustained manner alters group behavior. This is what is missing currently from HAPS. There is a tendency to uh, approach community with a very broad brush. Uh, so we need to streamline that, target that at the vulnerable sections uh, in the language and the medium that effectively conveys the impacts of exposure to extreme heat. 
uh, traditional methods as highlighted by Dr. Jyoti Parik uh, should be a focus area. The last area that I wanted to talk about, and uh, uh, this is because I also work on air quality as my role uh, as the lead for uh, air quality and climate resilience in NRG is the need for building out co-benefits as well as convergence with on ongoing climate action. So, uh, like uh, it has been noted before, there is, uh, there are, uh, there, there are piecemeal uh, action uh, interventions happening across different uh, line departments at the municipal level, different departments uh, at the state level and different ministries at the na national level. So, there is a need to build out a unified approach to this. Uh, specific, specifically, here there is an opportunity to build as well as strengthen unified capacity on environmental health across levels, national, state, but very importantly, local levels. Uh, like Dr. Vikas mentioned, the local level is where the uh, implementation happens. So that's perhaps more important than the other two. Uh, there is now an opportunity to build out uh, localized capacities uh, so teams at the municipal level or external teams, but definitely long-term teams, not consultants like uh, uh, mentioned before, uh, who have the capacity to analyze health, meteorological, socio-economical, as well as other forms of data, uh, to build on forecasts and other historical data, as well as to build out a proactive response rather than a responsive uh, uh, reaction to environmental health risk factors. and. I say environmental health risk factors and not extreme heat, because here the opportunity lies in uh, working across segments, you know, air pollution as well as clim other climate linked disasters, drought, uh, um, uh, extreme heat, of course, uh, these are all correlated. Uh, there is a lot of action now at the international state and I believe will soon trickle down at the, to the state level on uh, energy transition. So this whole uh, question of net zero and therefore, uh, movement towards cleaner forms of energy and their impact on climate. So there is an opportunity here to, to integrate these responses at the local level is what I'm trying to say. Here I must say that uh, NDMA has taken a proactive appro approach to moving beyond just responsive HAPs to incorporate middle and long-term interventions into heat response, uh, uh, heat response resilience building. Uh, last year, the NDMA, uh, along with NRDC and partners, were involved in uh, launching the uh, uh, the National Cool Roof Challenge, which uh, encouraged cities and districts and states across India to build out localized targets to implement cool roofs and passive cooling, to therefore integrate this uh, co uh, uh, dual approach of energy efficiency, uh, reduction of uh, energy consumption, as well as uh, reducing the impact of ex extreme heat. So, uh, looking at uh, the NDMA is also looking at the integration of action on town and civic planning. Uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Rajshree Kot uh, Kothalpur is here, but uh, she's been working on this, as well as on building thermal insulation and improvement uh, into energy efficiency and passive cooling. So, there's a lot that can be done here. We are uh, at a uh, we are at a inflection point, uh, so to speak. And uh, already this year, we are seeing the impacts of extreme heat. Uh, Rohit, I think, showed in his graph that there are certain parts of India that are already 8 to 10 degrees above uh, uh, what the normal seasonal temperature is. Uh, the, the, wild, the fire in Sariska is now being, uh, is the spread of it is being attributed to uh, how uh, dry the uh, landscape was uh, owing to extreme heat. So it's, uh, it's time we work on this, and I'll, I'll stop at that. Thank you. Thank you, Polash, covering wide spectrum of environmental health and highlighting the need to have a multi-hazard approach, not only the heat alone, but along with that, not many factors, the air quality, the water scarcity, drought, long term. And uh, this is what uh, now the approach is to have a multi-hazard impact-based forecasting and necessary follow-up actions required. So this is very much required. The other thing that you brought out was the challenge to build up a good quality environmental health data. So any see knowledge-based intervention has to come with the with the data which is of good quality. 
otherwise it will be more of a so this is another part third of course is uh, let me complement the nrdc where uh, so outside the government system this heat action plants were started in ahmedabad so so this is a very good example which uh, other civil society organizations can can take up that yes the government many times in, in their own bureaucratic setup is not proactive uh, to take up such whereas uh, civil society has got a freedom and and they can bring many expert knowledge partners to to implement so this is a very good example which nrdc is now moving into a second phase of tool loop initiative along with the ndma and other agencies state governments of andhra uh, telangana so this, this is a, a very good uh, initiative and by the nrdc so please convey our appreciation to nrdc and uh, i think it's about is a, again a teamwork also so we have to work together so this uh, this is a very good example where nrdc initially brought uh, experts from outside the country iit it was adopted and then gradually it was totally taken over by the indian partners and now uh, it, it has become a i think a good example of of developing a heat action plan and implementing it so thank you polash for sharing your views and uh, i'm sure this cooperative work will continue and uh, you will also extend it to the other south asian countries so uh, this is where the need of the hours thank you polash and now we move to is, is uh, dr manan there dr manan so we can't see him there so okay okay the okay. difficulties of maybe maybe uh, some pacing things okay uh, is anup uh, is there if he's not uh, he said that his slides yes, can be shared so yes, you can sir, share yes. his slides okay sir uh, which uh, the ndma is uh, activities and, and the directions okay sir so my team you will show the slides here by sorry just give me a second and yeah thank you nisha so so uh, this is a presentation of mr anup kumar shrivastav uh, which i am presenting on this behalf uh, about heat wave management in india next slide please so ndma is a apex body which is responsible for the disaster management planning uh, in the country with respect to the policy and uh, the narrative with respect to the disaster management is uh, is is uh, is actually looked into by the ndma so ndma is also at the is, is at the forefront of the uh, planning with respect to the heat waves management as well as if to show the guidelines for the heat wave management uh, for developing the heat action plans so Uh, so india with 1.4 billion population is uh, is uh, is one of the most populated country in the world and uh, where we have 31% people living urban and 69% living in urban area so urbanization is in on rise in india and so are the heat wave events also rising in india and also globally uh, heat waves are rising because of the rise in average global temperature due to the heat waves uh, due to the uh, due to the global warming uh, so we also find including urban heat islands and um, so in india if you look at the trends of the heat waves so there were only nine states which were reporting in uh, heat wave related events in 2015 and uh, now it has spread to 23 states 
with uh, made by 2019. So demand does rise in terms of the heat wave geography also. Uh, so one part is the rise in number of heat wave events and also rise in heat wave geography. So this is like you know affecting all across the country mostly and uh, this is something uh, which is very clear evidence of uh, the need for adapting to the heat stress and uh, actions for the heat management. So these are figures with related to heat wave uh, deaths. So it caused more than 25,000 deaths. These are reported deaths, but uh, however, you know, the number is much more compared to what is being reported as heat wave deaths in India. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So the challenge and the issues with, with respect to the lot of, as I said, that lot of mortality happens due to the heat waves. But again, uh, with respect to the reporting, so it's uh, so the accurate information with respect to the heat related mortality as per the mortality is limited. And uh, institutional mechanisms, because uh, they are also lacking with respect to the clear cut. Uh, Clear cut actions and clear cut institutions which are responsible for actions. So that is a challenge. And, uh, and, and also, uh, this is a major issue that heat wave is still not recognized as a disaster in the country. So, the various measures which are taken at the time of the disaster, so they are not, uh, they, 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 uh, they are not being taken since that it is not recognized as a disaster uh, by the country. And it's as as said that for a notified disaster, but it should be definitely notified as a disaster. Next, please. So I think this was a game changer when NDM first issued for preparation guidelines for preparation of the action plan, and uh, which are being periodically revised uh, through its annual workshop. So these guidelines are further revised, uh, looking at the ground experiences, feedback from the expert. 2017 and 19, and NDMA has been very active, and uh, Mr. Noop himself has contributed a lot with respect to the the guidelines and the workshops which have been held, uh, and, uh, and 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 a very and a huge success in terms of uh, engaging with the stakeholders. So NDMA's efforts uh, with respect to the hazard analysis uh, is uh, where you know it, it has provided the hazard analysis of the heat wave and it also pursued election commissions uh, to take all possible measures toward heat risk reductions since that many states went to elections uh, during the summer season and uh, NDM is also pursuing the necessary action to reduce the vulnerability of the police personnel traffic personnel because they are the person of the duty they are they are on the roads where, and uh, in the midst of the vehicular uh, heat, vehicular emissions, uh, both air pollution and also creating urban heat island. So uh, these, this is a uh, this is a step which has been taken by NDMA, and they have also developed and shared the rural fire mitigation plans in wake of rise in the forest fires uh, with respect to the heat waves. So this is an important step which has been taken. And uh, also, NDMA issued special advisories with respect to the heat stress because heat stress is not something which is obviously, uh, uh, which is uh, being, uh, uh, which is not only outdoors, but a lot of uh, uh, indoor heat stress is due to the housing conditions and as said earlier, due to the uh, availability of the amenities at their location. So NDMA has uh, worked very proactively in, in, in this area. Next, please. So, NDMA's issues uh, seasonal advice, outlook advisories. It has done the review of heat wave preparedness to video conferencing uh, last year as well and this year as well. And uh, uh, in terms of mitigation measures, they have launched a pool group challenge, which is uh, how to, and also uh, nudging uh, cities to uh, get the uh, pool groups. Uh, Pool roofs uh, being adapted by the various uh, housing authorities and the low income groups. So, to partner, to uh, identify and work with the partners to uh, mitigate the effects of the rising heat. So, this has been quite successful. And uh, 
NDMA has a lot of IEC campaign material where it has come up with the videos and uh, uh, also uh, uh, the, uh, the advisories which have been from the posters, which, which have been widely disseminated and available on the NDMA website. Next, please. Yeah, and recently it also developed a manual on house owners guide to alternate food cooling solution. So this manual actually provides what are the various possible solutions with respect to uh, cooling the roofs. And it's a very uh, it's a very useful manual and available on the Indian website. Next, please. Yeah, and I think this impact slide which talks a lot about the hard work and uh, the and also the persuasion which has been done by the NDMA with the respective states and districts and the cities in bringing down the mortality, though the heat wave is affecting more states. So, but the mortality has been brought down. So, that this is, has it's been, uh, I think, this is a global example which NDMA has done in terms of reducing the mortality with respect to the heat wave. So, so this. This was a brief presentation on the NDM work with respect to the heat waves done in India. Uh, so I will uh, uh, request you to check the websites. A lot of lot of reference material guidelines as well as the IC available on the NDM website. So with that, I'd like to just close this presentation on behalf of Mr. Anil Kumar. Thank you. Thank you, Rohit, for covering uh, NDMA's achievements and the new initiatives related to the heat waves. And it is clearly visible that by their proactive steps, um, the mortality has come down significantly. And they are also working on the full roof initiative and many other, and proactively identify the potential areas where heat waves can lead to mortality like when the elections were taking place or for the police personnel. So this is, and this is a very good example where by, by taking leadership at the national level and guiding states, they have been able to implement the heat action plans very effectively. And what every year they hold uh, review meetings and the workshops for the awareness. So it's, it's not, uh, it's a work in progress. That is another very important. Otherwise, typically, you develop a heat action plan or any action plan, and it, it, it is not being updated or changed. So this is a very, very, uh, I think, progressive action on, on the part of the NDMA, the results of which are very evident. I'm sure uh, other disaster management agencies in the region will will be can learn a lot from. So now, if Dr. Manan is not there, we are to the final presentation. We uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Ramiz Khan, sir. Okay, so please yeah. invite him. Uh, yeah. he, he represents uh, Red Cross, so this is uh, the one. Uh, organization which across the countries all over have been working at the ground level. Uh, so this is uh, very important because uh, rural areas and many of the remote areas which get affected by heat waves, uh, I think the Red Cross can play a very important role. Thank you. Uh, to introduce Ramiz, uh, Mr. Ramiz Khan is an urban sustainability and resilience building practitioner and a researcher with over 10 years experience working in at least 25 cities and their respective local governments across Asia. He's currently working with Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center as an urban advisor in supporting the team in urban actions on heat, forecast-based financing, coastal resilience, and water and sanitation. Over to you, Mr. Khan. Thanks. Thanks, Professor Tiagi. Thanks, Timisa, for the... Uh, introduction and also thanks to the other panelists and um, Mr. Rohit Bagotra for giving me this opportunity to present our uh, various work that we have, do we have been doing in the region. 
Uh, but Nimisha, would you mind to share my presentation? Because as I, as I told, I've got some technical glitch. I can share my screen somehow. Would be really grateful if you can please uh, run the presentation on behalf of me. Yeah, uh, if to give me a few seconds. Uh, Ramesh, uh, yeah, yeah you can start. Uh, can I just make it full screen? No? It's not happening? Yeah, give me a second. Let me try. Ramiz, I think you can start a bit about it while she's sharing. I have just sent you yeah. the presentation in PPT also. Um, if you, if it is convenient, then you can please run the PPT PPT version. This PDF version I sent you earlier, but my, I just sent you the PPT version. Yeah, but please uh, cover your slide one or two in the meantime while she's oh, sure. getting it. Sure, so that we don't uh, lose yeah, my yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. much time. So. Uh, thanks, thanks again to uh, Nimisha and other panelists, Dr. Tiagi and um, Dr. Magotra and other panelists for giving this opportunity. I'll be largely talking about the tools for heat action that we have developed and we have been working in South Asia region. Uh, but before that, uh, before that, just to set the context, I think everyone has talked <laughs> about the um, impacts. Just to set the context. <laughs> Uh, there's some background no. yeah so as you all know extreme heat has global implication for public health in in last 20 years um, you could you could see in my presentation but um, uh, the lancet countdown reports that there has been a 54 percent increase in heat related deaths um, in older people globally and not only that the heat has uh, also economic implication with reduced productivity and disruptions uh, resulting from the heat i think mr magotra presented uh, through his study the same and other panelists too uh, in terms of south asia south asia is also facing the deadly impacts of extreme heat uh, according to a global uh, according, according to a world bank projection the annual temperature and heat uh, annual temperature in South Asia's hotspot is projected to increase 1.5 to 3 degrees centigrade by two, two, uh, 2050 relative to uh, 1981 to 2020 10. Another study reveals that almost half of the region's population 
or 800 million people live in South Asia at hotspots. So uh, we used to consider uh, largely it as like a global event, but uh, or South Asia is equally vulnerable for the heat related uh, date or morbidity or mortality. However, um, the, one of the biggest challenges that we face is lack of research when heat becomes dangerous. It could be 25 degrees centigrade in England or over 40 degrees centigrade in India. In some parts of the world, this, this, this research is largely missing in some of the world, especially in Africa, South America, parts of um, Asia. Uh, even still, there has been progress in South Asia, and particularly especially in India, but uh, very little to no evidence has found that lots of study or lots of research has been done in Bangladesh, uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, in, this, um, in these countries. So uh, this is another challenge, and as um, uh, Dr. Parikh, I think, mentioned, like it's very hard to relate the date uh, directly linked to the heat. Um, so this is another challenge that we face. And Nimisha, can you go to the next to next slide? Two slides later, probably. Yeah, uh, previous slide, please. Next. Great. So in this regard, uh, considering this dearth of research in the region, especially, as I mentioned, especially in uh, Bangladesh and Nepal. Uh, we uh, initiated a study, we conducted a study in one city in Nepal and one city in Bangladesh, basically, basically to identify when to act or where to act. I, uh, the idea is basically to identify the threshold and the hotspot. Uh, so we chose Nepal Ganj. Um, the city is basically suggested by the Authorities, Nepal Red Cross Society, as well as uh, Disaster Management Department, they suggested this city, uh, given the risk and the threat in the in the region. It falls in the Tarai region. Uh, it borders with India, and temperature reaches there. Temperature reaches 40 ever 40 degree every year in the city. Another city we chose again was suggested by Bangladesh Red Crescent Society and also Bangladesh Meteorological Department. It's Rajshahi, where we did this, where we conducted the study. Initially, our aim was to develop a comprehensive, developing a comprehensive heat action plan. Like, um, like you have, you have got examples from Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad Surat, and Rajkot, and Bhuvaneshwar, and other cities that uh, Rohit just presented. But we also, we also planned, we also planned almost similar uh, action. We wanted to do a comprehensive heat action, develop a comprehensive heat action plan. But we had to restructure our plan considering the. COVID-19 spike in the region. So we then decided instead of doing a comprehensive reduction plan, let's develop, let's identify the thresholds and the hotspot for both the cities. Uh, but the study, but even the study has also a couple of limitations. The heat threshold has been developed based on the availability of secondary data. Due to time constraints, the heat threshold model could not be tested extensively for months. We just did for a few, few days. However, it helps to uh, establish a concept that the city authority or other um, relevant stakeholders, emergency service providers especially, can refine if required and in, the, in a future heat, uh, future heat session, uh, season. Uh, another limitation that we, uh, we faced due to sudden spike in COVID-19 cases in the region and the strict restriction induced to curb the pandemic an extensive survey or other participant exercises to the to coordinate the impacts and exposure finding from the secondary analysis uh, to corroborate the impacts sorry so to corroborate the uh, impacts and exposure findings that we have got from the secondary data analysis could not be performed um, we initially had planned to do some uh, community level survey and some participatory tool we wanted to use but we we could not be able to do unfortunately because of the covid however a rapid however a rapid and light survey uh, to understand the vulnerability was undertaken. The sample size was very low, uh, very less, uh, considering the population size. But still, we got some idea and some concept. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, so we did, uh, as I mentioned, we did for two cities, one in, in uh, Rajshahi and Nepal. So I'm just presenting one case study for Rajshahi what is the result came up came out out of our study so we did the analysis the, the analysis and the and the study was quite extensive if you go to the report you will see the report is published yesterday uh, uh, last week actually um, and i will i will share with you the link so if you want you can go through the report and you can see the entire methodology and the and the study that you have done 
And we came to this result that extreme heat in Rajshah is 38 degrees centigrade is the maximum daily temperature in Rajshah city and it become extreme event if that is 38 degrees centigrade. But when authority needs to start taking actions, uh, when temperature, humidity and heat index, which starts impacting the vulnerable community in Rajshah here, when temperatures reaches 41 degrees centigrade, humidity is minimum 8% and heat index is 41 respectively. That is the time when authority needs to start the corrective measures, basically the uh, mitigate, mitigation, mitigation measures, short term, mostly short term. So that is one of the results uh, in terms of threshold that we found. Next slide, please. In terms of uh, hotspot, uh, as you can see, ward number 4 and 20, uh, 28 are the highly vulnerable, followed by wards uh, 19, 14. Uh, yes, this, this is the one. No, this is the one, yes. Uh, ward number four, uh, 4 and 20, uh, 28 are highly vulnerable, followed by wards 19, 24, 3, 30, 25, 11, and 14. It has been, in terms of what has been reported that uh, one of the most low income groups, groups habitation are housed in ward number 28. On the other hand, the increasing, uh, tend, uh, increasing trend uh, of build up areas, the reducing trajectory of water bodies and green coverage have been also observed in ward four in past year. So this can uh, attribute to the analysis that why ward number four and 28 has come as a hot spot. This can be considered as some of the key factors for uh, vulnerability of uh, heat waves, but this is not the only, this is not only limited to that. These wards are also uh, close to the char land. It's called uh, basically the river, uh, the river island, uh, the Padma River, and also the, uh, I forgot the terminology, barren land, uh, some kind of barren, uh, barren track, they call it. Basically, it's a hilly, rocky soil, um, a bit rocky soil. Uh, so that is one of the reason, uh, um, so these areas came up as a, a hotspot area, and of course, the high density of built up area, as I mentioned. In terms of vulnerable group, uh, we found individuals with low low socioeconomic status, people living, especially people living in teen roof house, teen roofed houses, daily workers like auto drivers, uh, or tour drivers, and rickshaw pullers, construction workers, street hawkers, vendors, etc. Among these vulnerable groups, the most impact uh, impact in the city are uh, rickshaw pullers and auto drivers. Uh, we conducted a survey to understand the severity and the, the impact. The survey results indicate that uh, they lose 20 to, uh, 18 to 20 percent of their income, respectively, if they reduce four hours of work in three, three days during the heat wave days. So in a simple language, if they cannot work for uh, four hours for consecutively three days, they lose almost 20 percent of their income. Uh, medium impacts are observed among construction workers and people living in the teen roof houses, which are teen thatched, metal thatched houses, whereas street hawkers, beers are relatively low mark compared to other vulnerable groups. So these are the main findings uh, uh, from this study. I, sh I presented only Rajshahi, but we did the similar study for Nepal also. Next, next slide, please, Nimisha. Uh, these are the two, these are the report, the study report that has been that that have published uh, that have been published that have published last week. Yes, uh, you can uh, the links are there, so you can go, you can download the reports and you can see and you can also comment your point of view and get back to us if you find there is some gap in the analysis or in the research. But yeah, uh, but we have some plan for future action and to make uh, this report the outcome more comprehensive and uh, actionable. That is our plan. Uh, based on this analysis and study, we also uh, uh, develop some policy. Policy. Uh, next slide, please, Nimisha. Yes. So, based on this study report, you also develop uh, policy briefs for both the cities. I'm presenting on the uh, presenting the Rajasthan city only. The product, the, basically, the policy brief uh, has been developed based on secondary analysis, literature review, and through an extensive stakeholder consultation process. Uh, and um, there are three main um, main uh, area that we focused on, like headings you can say, like for example, a review of existing policy framework. Here we have highlighted some of the key frameworks and how they can be 
here we have highlighted some of the key frameworks and how they can be applied on heat or, or where gaps exist heat may need to be uh, better integrated uh, so key framework for example the the national adaptation plan which is being revised and the other policy frameworks that they have so that we, we all the policy framework we research, we did some analysis and find out the gap and how it can be integrated we we recommend in the policy brief we also shortlisted some of the short term strategies for managing heat risk that the city uh, authorities and the stakeholders would be very much interested for example water access and cooling centers potential uh, for example the potential location also include well, uh, Sahib Bazar zero point, uh, Lukhipur Moor, and the railway station, and Bhadra Moor. So all these four station, four potential location I mentioned, these are either junction of the, uh, either junction point or bus stop, or uh, or key business business area. So the stakeholder realizes that the area where they need more um, a cooling center, need some kind of cooling center or water access access point uh, at the at the moment it is not there. Uh, uh, we also short, we also identify some of the long-term strategies for uh, managing heat risk. Some, for example, green and blue infrastructure management uh, and conservation. Rasa, the good point is that Rasa City Corporation has already identified 20 water bodies to rehabilitate and protect them based on the consultation with us. Uh, they have also agreed to work some kind of energy management as power cuts increase during peak summer months, especially May, July months in uh, in in uh, in Rajshahi. So these are some long term measures that we also identified, and in future our plan is to uh, um, to support the respective municipality to actually implement on the ground. Uh, next next slide, please. So these is the, these are the policy briefs. If you want to, you can download and you can uh, have a look on the policy briefs. Uh, it's in public domain at the moment. Uh, as a future course of action, we have already shortlisted some of the activities, and we're planning to start those action activities soon. Since we have much more freedom, there is not much restriction due to COVID, and we are planning to start the action probably from next month or next to next month. So, for example, we want to initiate the stakeholder engagement on heat wave preparedness and response using existing materials through consultation with relevant stakeholders such as DHM, uh, uh, such as uh, BDA, uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh Disaster Management Department, uh, sorry, Bangladesh Meteorological Department, BMD, uh, city officials, disaster management department. We want to conduct a community level in depth impact analysis and capacity assessment, awareness program, in depth analysis and validation of the heat wave impacts, analyzing. Uh, investigating public health data, uh, we are we are already uh, had initial dialogue with one of the hospitals, the medical college actually in Asrahi. Formulation of a trigger, trigger which is very important. Uh, we really wanted to do that um, as our next step that we wanted to develop a we wanted to formulate a trigger model and a simulation in the city, particularly in the vulnerable wards, and develop and develop a early warning, early action standard operating protocol, uh, a standard operating procedure, uh, SOP. In Rajshahi, so that the city authority emergency service provider can work on anticipated reaction on heat wave management, and ultimately we'll be also developing a heat action plan, comprehensive heat action plan that we planned early uh, last year, but we couldn't able to do. But this is something we'll be doing this year. That is what we are thinking for. Next slide, please. Uh, this is some feasibility study we we did some Dhaka we did for Dhaka here we actually. Last year, we published this study for Dhaka in collaboration with Bangladesh Meteorological Department, uh, Dhaka South City Corporation. Uh, Bangladesh... Please, uh, sorry, but you have to wrap up in a minute or so because okay. we have exceeded the session time. So please wrap it up. In next okay, time. I'll just take two, four minutes more. So this is some of the study that you can uh, download. So I'm not explaining again. But one thing I would say, this study is more comprehensive as we undertook an extensive survey with community, especially in around the hotspot to identify the impact limits. As a tool, we have developed two heat wave guides. Uh, it is available in the public domain again. Here is the links. Uh, one for cities and another for civil society organizations. The both, um, both contain information and resources for implementing heat wave actions, including what you can do before, during, and after heat wave. Lastly, uh, a heat communication plan um, that has published actually day before yesterday, and it is going to be promoted by Ikle South Asia, I think, uh, end of this week. Uh, um, this guide is designed primarily for the staff within the city government who develop and implement adaptation and response strategies to reduce the impact of extreme heat. Here is the link you can download again. Um, this, is, this is a practical guide 
let me uh, clear it out. This is a practical guide to understand the key components of the effective public communication plan, mostly the four key components, access, relevance, and understanding and action. A set of, a set of recommended actions is included in each, 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 action, each section, so you can find what the city government can do. Uh, this guide can also be used for other organization institutions who uh, want to work on reducing the heat impact on the public and involving large scale communication. We also develop a set of uh, campaign material. Can you please uh, uh, go ahead, Nimisha, next slide, please. Next slide, Nimisha, next slide, next slide. I already talked about this guide. Uh, and that is what I was talking about the heat communication uh, uh, guide. Uh, you can download it from. Uh, uh, from this link and these are the four key components that I mentioned. Next slide, Nimisha, please. Uh, these are a set of uh, campaign material that we uh, uh, that we developed uh, uh, basically for awareness program. There is a set of posters, a social media post for Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook. Uh, these campaign materials are available in public domain also. If you need, you can just uh, write to me. I can I can share it to you, with you. These awareness these awareness materials are uh, uh, are published in English. These are available in English, Bengali, and Hindi. Uh, but yeah, we can develop another language too. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, we have also developed some um, educational video, a whiteboard explainer video, for example, uh, how to recognize the sign of heat illness uh, and what kind of first aid that you can provide. So this kind of educational video we have developed also. There are five or six in total. These are also. Uh, uh, develop in English, uh, Bengali, and Nepali. Um, if you want to access up them, if you want them, I, we can. Um, I can share with you um, that much uh, about all the activities that we have been doing in South Asia. Uh, if you need next slide, please. If you need any uh, further information, or if you cannot access any of this document or link that I just showed you, please let me know. I'll be happy to share with you all the documents, all the all the publications. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ramesh, for see, giving the work done by you despite the challenges faced during the COVID. And uh, I'm happy that you are now bringing it into an actionable mode. And of course, um, it will require if OK. <laughs> so your offer uh, to contact you for further information is most encouraging, and I'm sure uh, good work done by the Red Cross uh, will be used, and uh, the other cities also will be beneficial. So thank you so much, and I, I since we have overshot the time, I, I hand it over to the issue organizers. Thank you. Roy. Yes, sir. I think uh, uh, so just a passing comment. I think as a part of the work which we are doing for the APN Asia Pacific Network, we are also uh, the ICAD is actually working, will be working with the city of Rajshahi to further revolve the heat action plan. So I think there are synergies, and Mr. Olam will definitely benefit from the experiences of the, uh, the IFRC in Bangladesh. So, Mr. Alam, I would uh, strongly urge you to kindly go through the, uh, the material which has been developed by IFRC and also the study which they have done, actually, that would be very useful. So, with that, passing it off, I'll just request Nimisha to provide a report of things. Thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we express our gratitude and extend our, uh, to our esteemed panelists and our participants who have joined to make this session successful. Uh, on behalf of Irade and Sama, uh, we express our sincere thanks and gratitude. Thank you all. Yeah, and I think uh, we are most thankful to the Tabashona platform and uh, particularly to Professor Haq as well as to Mr. Alam, uh, to Matiha, to Sakir, and all of us people part of the ICAT team who have helped us steer this uh, event in a very short period of time. And it was a, such a flawless coordination by Madhya. So we, we, we are thankful to you and uh, all the ICA team who have supported us to organize this successful session. We have organized one in the last year. We are doing it this year. 
and we do look forward to plan another session in the coming year. Thank you.